All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Going to be touching on my first bets here for week seven. Let's go ahead and get into it. And I do think it's worth calling out that I am doing this video early. So because of that, it's not going to be like a traditional like EV type type of video where, you know, we're making good bets based off of how Vegas sees the game going on prize space and underdog. This is actually going to be for all the sports books, just trying to gain an edge on some bets where I think the lines are wrong bets that I think will eventually get bumped up or bumped down uh, to what they probably should be. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to gain an edge on some, some lines that will probably get adjusted. And so let's go ahead and start off with my first kind of favorite bet. It's going to be Joe Mixon to get over 59.5 rushing yards. Now, this is one where it started out at about 60 on prize picks and has since come down. And so I think it's just worth pulling it up here on a traditional sports book. So where can we get the best odds on this? Right now we can get uh, him to get over 59.5 rush yards on ESPN bet at plus 100. That's not terrible. I'm kind of fine with that. We do see that the average sports book line is closer to 57.83. So that prize picks line is a little bit too high, uh, but I do like this bet. If we look at both kind of what he's been able to do uh, thus far this season, through three games that he's played and he's been able to average almost 100 rushing yards per game he's been having a very solid time being able to rush the football but at the same time he gets a good matchup going against the green bay packers now that packers defense has tightened things up a little bit lately but this is a game that i think will be a little bit higher scoring and i think the reason why we're getting the line so low is because of this snap count that he got last week 42 percent of the snaps but i do think it's worth calling out when that game wasn't was close he ended up getting 62% of the snaps in the first half. And I think that's the big reason why we are seeing this line be so low at around, you know, 59.5. I think that's a good over bet. And really, guys, like if you can bet him at minus 115 on DraftKings, I'm fine with that. We see Underdog has now bumped it up to 60.5. This was actually at 58.5 uh, to start the day. So definitely interesting live mo movement. But I do agree with the over being the correct bet here for Joe Mixon. Uh, he's someone that should only get more snaps as he gets more healthy. Interesting kind of piece of news. The Houston Texans literally just traded Cam Akers away. And I think that's more a case of Dario Gumbawale outplaying him and also Damian Pierce being back healthy. But also... Joe Mixon being healthy enough as well. Like they they wouldn't trade him if all three of those guys weren't good to go. So again, that gives me a little bit more confidence in Joe Mixon. And so my next favorite bet is going to be kind of an ugly one if you're someone that looks at the last five average. Uh, but I like uh, Justin Herbert to get over 90, 194.5 passing yards. You look at it, last week was actually his toughest matchup thus far for uh, production for opposing quarterback. And he arguably had his best game. Now, I do think that that was also partly due to them coming in off of a bye and him being a little bit more healthy in that game as well. Uh, Quinton Johnson looked really good there. Uh, Land McConkey continues to you know be pretty solid there as well. And if you look at it, guys, this is going to be a pretty solid matchup here going against Arizona. In terms of like fantasy points given up, they rank out 28th uh, in the league. So obviously not good there. Justin Herbert, again, like it may, I, I think there was a little case of, all right, we need to throw the football a little bit more. I think that was something that they kind of did in their bye week. But also, like it, it wouldn't have made sense for that to be the best game because they're playing with the lead for most of the game as well. It's kind of it's kind of strange that that kind of coincided. And, and that's kind of my biggest takeaway. Now, it's a little bit too early on in the week for us to be getting any sports book lines on this one just yet. So this is going to be much more of a underdog bet or prize picks bet. I say or underdog because they currently have them at 192 and a half. So obviously, if you guys are someone that plays on both, want to make the best bet possible. If your betting is over, obviously, two yards difference. That's not huge, but that can end up being the case of a bet cashing or not cashing. And just to point out, like the Cardinals defense is giving up on average of 230 yards uh, passing per game. And so obviously that's a big uptick in terms of what Justin Herbert has been able to do thus far this season. And I was really just impressed with kind of the receivers in that game last week. Another bet that I like is actually going to be James Conner to get under 66.5 rushing yards. Now, this is more of a case of his matchup against the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers have been pretty good against stopping the run. Uh, last week, that was true as well against the Denver Broncos. Now, yes, the Denver Broncos aren't that good. Uh, I get that, especially in the Russian department. But we look at the matchup here with the, Air, or with the LA Chargers, sixth most difficult matchup. And again, this is in terms of fantasy scoring. We'll pull it up here on the 9-5 uh, cheat sheet here. We'll see the D actually has given up a decent amount of rushing yards, but not overall production. Um, 
And and another big takeaway here is really just the amount of snaps they played last week. Only 28% of the snaps. Now, he looked good as a runner, uh, but it was definitely strange. They kind of went away from him pretty early on. We saw a decent amount of Amari DiMercato and also a decent amount of Trey Benson, which Trey Benson was surprisingly not bad. So, uh, no, not a lock and load bet, but I do see this one being one that probably does drop a little bit. And so, guys, this is the bet slip that I made to start this video, and I'm, I'm calling this out because very annoying because the two bets I, I'm going to call it next Devon Valet for over 28.5 receiving yards and Juju Smith Schuster over 37.5 receiving yards. And this is why Devon Valet has been bumped up to 33.5 receiving yards now, which is very much annoying to me. So let's try to see if we can find a different bet for him. Another bet that I think could end up hitting. We're going to go back to the nine to five cheat sheet. And because this is a Thursday night game, we are getting some reception props for him. And I'll touch on that in just a second, but I do want to show you guys all the other receiving yard lines that we are getting for him. The average sportsbook line does have the set at 32. So there are some differences in the lines though. Like ESPN bet has is at 34.5. We're going to notice that bet MGM actually has at 31.5. So sportsbooks are clearly not really knowing how to value him. And uh, if I do, I missed this 30.5. Okay. So yes, it's one up from the 28.5 originally is good value. But there are different ways to go about attacking this, especially if you guys are someone that can bet on a traditional sports book. But let's take a peek at his receiving yards, or sorry, receptions. This is one that I don't mind. Okay, so we'll click on Hard Rock Bet or bet, whatever. Bet MGM is available for more people than I think Hard Rock Bet. So plus 125. And the appeal of Devon Valet is going to be the fact that in week one, played 49% of the snaps, tied the team in the amount of targets that he got. And then last week, finally played again, played in 62% of the snaps last week as well. Definitely strange his playing time. He was injured in week two and then was kind of a healthy scratch in week three, four, and five as well. And then last week comes back in and basically is instantly the receiver number two. Troy Franklin like has popped. He just hasn't been able to make the plays like Troy Franklin was making the plays. He could be a little bit more productive. But in terms of games that he's played in, he's averaging like eight targets, six receptions. And so if he's going to continue to play, I don't mind that. I do want to call it that a lot of his production, however, came in in garbage time. And I'm not, I, I don't know if I'm going crazy here. I believe he changed his number to to 17 and, and he did okay so maybe i just didn't notice that in week one because he was 81 during the preseason but uh that was his old college number 17 but yeah i, I do like him to get over 3.5 receptions this is really just a bet on that role still being there for him and if we look at the snap counts for the receivers we can sort it by there troy franklin did end up playing a lot more and he is just making too many mistakes like he's getting open that's great um he should be having a better season than he's had. Uh, but Valet's snaps came directly in replace of Humphrey and then Josh Reynolds. And so this isn't exactly like a, a lock and load bet. This is more a bet on him still getting that playing time. That's really what we're betting on here is that playing time because I think that role will still be there for him. Um, do worry a little bit about game script. This is only a 37 for a game total, very low scoring game. Maybe that doesn't lead to that many throwing opportunities in general in this game. So yeah, another one that we have here is going to be Juju Smith-Schuster get, to get over 39.5 receiving yards. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I, I probably still think he's washed, but I definitely would have said in that, you know, prior to that game that he was washed. Um, the way I phrase it like that is because I, I guess it's not too surprising to see a veteran running back who had looked washed um, in previous seasons have one splash game where they're kind of just healthy. Their body isn't betraying them at that point. That's kind of the worry with Juju Smith-Schuster long-term is that he, he more likely than not will not be able to keep up that production throughout a whole season. That just would not be shocking. And I also think part of what we saw there is two things. One, that Saints defense just really not being that good, uh, especially compared to what it seemed like they're going to be. And then two, the Saints just not being ready for Juju to look that good uh, as he did in that game. Obviously, it looked really great in that game. You know, Juju ended up playing 67% of the snaps, which was basically right on par with Justin Watson and Xavier Worthy. Uh, the thing with it is they they used Juju to replace Rasheed Rice, basically one for one swap there with that role. And so, yes, the game was extremely shocking. I, I don't want to downplay that, but look good. And, you know, if we were getting rice at this price tag, which I don't want to say we are, but if we were, uh, I think we'd be hammering this right at 39.5 receiving yard. Again, I'm not saying that's who he is, but he did kind of have that role. And so I really don't mind this over there for him as well. And then one of my favorite bets is actually going to be Ben Sims to get over 0.5 receptions. We can see his game log here. He has gotten this over well, once, <laughs> I guess, uh, once uh, game log wise, whatever. He's got it once, but the biggest takeaway here 
just because obviously go back to last season, is that Luke Musgrave had been averaging uh, the over here as well. And so he's been someone that has been getting two targets, you know, one target, one target, three targets. Luke Musgrave had been getting decently involved. So Ben Sims coming out in that game and getting two targets, two receptions, not too surprising, especially in the way that the Green Bay Packers like to use that kind of backup tight end, where a lot of the times it's a design play that they're getting it on just to kind of shock the defense. And so I don't love the idea of kind of betting on that. At the same time, I do think it's likely that he at least gets one opportunity in this game that's typically going to be a pretty easy uh, pass and catch. Now, in the Week 5 game, Ben Sims did have the same role, but he didn't get any targets. That was much more of a Tucker Craft game where Tucker Craft just went off. That also is a little bit of a concern, but still a very solid bet. Again, the backup tight end is averaging over a reception per game for the Green Bay Packers. I'm okay with it. I don't I don't, I don't think we have to go crazy with it. And for what it's worth, guys, let's just show you guys the top profits right now. Right now, we really aren't getting that go to VV bets on, on anything. And that's kind of why we're going through this process, right? To find maybe some potential edges that we have uh, on some bets that will get bumped. And so that was prize picks that I just showed you. Now this is going to be underdog. Again, just showing you guys that to, so you guys can see maybe which are the top prop bets. I will say Troy Franklin on underdog at 15.5. If he's going to be playing that much, which he might be like he stepped up into a bigger role. I don't hate that. We are seeing Bo Nix pass completions at 18.5. Not a terrible one there as well, uh, especially given the fact that Price Picks has it at 19. Uh, yeah, I don't mind. That's a decent bet there on underdog as well. And then lastly, again, a little bit too early in the week to get any uh, big edges on any of the traditional sports books in terms of lines just being flat out wrong. But in terms of the projected edge, Bo Nix right now, pass yards, the projection hit likes him a lot more than the average sportsbook line. So if that's something you guys agree with, maybe Bo Nix having a good game against the Saints defense that has looked defeatable over the last two weeks, I don't hate that. That's not a terrible route to go. And we can see maybe, I was going to say, maybe you do this bet, but I don't even see the point of doing that. You can just go minus 114, get the over uh, passing yards there for Bo Nix on FanDuel. And then you could kind of stack that with maybe Cortland Sun to get over his receiving yards. Again, I kind of like, I kind of like, Devon Valet a little bit better. Again, that's more or less just betting on the playing time there. And then Troy Franklin to get over 16.5 receiving yards. I'm kind of okay with that. The big plays have been there for him. Again, that's going to be a better bet on the underdog. So guys, this was the bet slip that I had prepared for you guys ready to go before some of these lines got bumped, which is extremely annoying. Still like the Bon Valet again. I think that's going to be a better bet on a traditional sports book. Uh, going to get a plus payout there. Uh, if he gets over 3.5 receptions again, that's going to be based off of him playing and i think he will uh juju i still like this one over um 39.5 receiving yards i'm kind of okay with that um this one actually went down a little bit joe mixon um for 59.5 rush yards still okay with that and this one also went up slightly but again this is a better bet on underdog there again just want to show everyone kind of the best bets that they can be on for week seven because right now prize picks underdog traditional bets doesn't really or traditional sports but doesn't really matter where you get your action and these are just bets where i think we are currently getting a decent edge on and so I wanted to call that out to you guys. Now that's going to be all for this video, guys. Make sure to give a like and subscribe to the channel. If you guys want access to any of the tools that you saw available in this video, head on over to 95sports.com. Get access to those all for just $10 a month. But when you use the promo code Keep cash and you'll get your first month for just $8. A very good value there. It's just an easy way to invest in yourself to ensure that you are making the best bets possible each and every slate. All right, guys, that's going to be all for today's video. Make sure to give a like and subscribe. I do appreciate that. Um, comment one of your favorite bets if you guys have one. Again, the thing I love about uh, betting is that everyone can help each other out. Like if someone's using the edge, typically speaking, if you're going to put it in the comment section, you are seeing something. So uh, yeah, toss one in there. But all right, guys, that's going to be all. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And as always, let's keep cash.